dear learners welcome today we'll discuss about the landslides its types and causes landslide is a serious geological hazard it's an annual and recurring phenomena it is a major chronic problem primarily because of the rugged topography unfavorable hill slopes heavy and prolonged rainfall development activities and exploitation of natural resources in the hilly region have further aggravated this problem it is particularly common during the monsoon affecting communication loss of property and sometime even the human life it also damages natural resources and disturb the ecosystem and environment well let's see the landslide hazard map of india it shows that in the himalayan terrain it is very high and it is high in the northeastern hill ranges and moderate in the western ghat and nilgiris severity it comes down from the himalayan terrain from the northeastern hill region then western ghat nilgiris and eastern ghat and the vindhyan we all know about the effect of the landslide it causes substantial damage to agriculture and forest wealth roads telecommunication and major engineering structures it has great impact on injury and loss of life and damage to the properties it also causes blocking of the rivers channels thereby forming a huge lakes which when burst creates flash flood causing much heavy losses the nation suffers heavy monetary loss every year because of the landslides it is enormous when cumulative figures are taken you will be surprised that total estimate cost for loss of property is nearly 2 billion rupees per annum in this landslide incidences thus this landslide hazards have very serious impact not only on socio economic structure of the region but also in disruption a complete misery to the human life you see any landslide is not a disaster landslide basically the hazard but when this landslide affect any lost property or the life then it becomes a disaster let's see the effect and sign of the landslides well tilted telephone poles retaining walls or sometimes trees you see it takes a turn near the slope cracks in the foundation can be seen even in the houses you can the side walls and the driveways of the houses even the cracks are developed on the ground and the roads and sudden emergence or stoppage of flowing water or falling of stones or boulders from the hill slopes are also the early warning of a landslide now let's understand the landslide in fact landslides are downward and outward movement of soil or rock mass that may be set off by one or more causes under the influence of gravity various people have used different terms for landslides such as mass wasting mass movement slope failure and slope movement mass movements can range in magnitude from soil creep to huge landslides now there are very terminology that we use in case of landslides let's see crown the top portion of a landslide is a the crown then flanks both sides that refers to the portion of the slides with undisplaced material adjacent to the sides of the rupture surface then head of the slide is the upper part of the landslide along the contact between the displaced material and the main scarp and foot is the portion of the landslide that has moved beyond the toe of the surface of rupture that overlies the original ground surface and main body is the main part of the displaced material of the landslide that overlies the surface of rupture between the main scarp and toe of the surface of rupture main scarp is a steep surface on the undisturbed ground of the upper edge of the landslide which is caused by the movement of displaced material away from the undisturbed ground it is visible part of the surface of the rupture a minor scarp is a steep slope on displaced material which is produced by the differential movement within the displaced material surface of rupture 
surface that forms lower boundary that displaces the material below the original ground surface is the surface of rupture and this is very important to study or to know what is the surface of rupture then accumulation it is a volume of the displaced material which has fallen from the top and has been accumulated on the ground surface well toe toe is the lowest usually curved margin of the displaced material of a landslide it is the most distinct part from the main scarp now let's see the types of landslide the first category is the falls it refers to the abrupt movement of the slope material that becomes detached from a steep slope or cliff most of the movement occur by free fall or by rolling or bouncing depending upon the type of slope material it may be called as rock fall debris fall or soil fall you see when we talk about rock fall it is a mass of the rock of any size detached from a steep slope or cliff that descend mostly through the air by free falling and when we talk of the debris fall it is the same as rock fall but the material is smaller it is in forms of debris likewise the soil fall it is the same as the rock fall but the material involved is the soil then we have the topple next category is topples it refers to those blocks of rock that tilt or rotate forward on a pivot or hinge again it can be called as rock topple debris topple or soil topple depending on the type of the material so rock topple forward rotation of a unit under the action of gravity of the other forces that created by the adjacent unit or by fluid in cracks now next category is the slides it refers to the movement caused by the finite shear failure along one or more surface of the rupture which are visible or whose presence may reasonably be inferred very slow movement of the slide is called a photograph show the creep of in lower dibang valley where the road has creep down well creep is an extremely slow down movement of dry superficial matter movement of the soil occurs in the region which are subjected to freeze thaw conditions slides are of two types it is rotational and translational rotational slides refer to a failure which involves slight movement on a circular or near circular surface of failure they generally occur on slopes of homogeneous clay shale weathered rocks and soil the movement is more or less rotational about an axis parallel to the contours of the slope such slides are characterized by a scarp at the head which may be nearly vertical these slides may be single rotational multiple rotational or successive rotational types single rotational slides a failure which involves sliding movement on a circular or semi circular failure surface and multiple rotational slides it manifold development of rotational movements that includes two or more slip block each with a curved slip surface tendential to a common generally deep seated surface it may be super imposed or juxtaposed now coming to successive rotation slide as for rotational slip but a successive slide consists of a assembly of individual rotational slips down a slope often of a shallower undulation form translation slides are non rotational block slides involving mass movement on more or less planar surface the movement of translation slide is controlled by weak surfaces such as bedding joints foliation faults and shear zones the slide material may range from unconsolidated soils to slab of the rock and the debris and these are classified as block slides slab slides and debris slides depending upon the material involved as i mentioned block slides are translational slides in which the moving mass consists of a single unit of a rock block that moves down slope it often possesses a graven at its head slab slide as similar as for the block slide but is fi material it may not possess a graven because it may occur on a steeper slope then debris slide a translational slide it covers debris that consists of many 
semi independent units of disrupt nature which may later adopt other forms of movement and may turn into a very rapid form may be called as debris avalanche is a slide of a block now coming to these translational slide which are planar in this the rock slide it is a translational and planar movement of rock units usually on a steep bedded slope it may develop into rocks of debris avalanche fall and mud slide relatively planar movement of softened argillaceous material moving mainly on a pronounced silicon side shear surface it advances chiefly by sliding in elongated form on steeper straight slopes or lobate then next category is the spread it refers to the failure caused by the liquefaction where saturated and loose sediments are transformed into liquid state normally earthquakes are responsible for this phenomena well flow it refers to a rapid movement of material as a viscous mass it may be called as debris flow mud flow or rock avalanche depending upon the nature of the material involved in the movement debris flow it is a rapid movement of material which consists a high proportion of coarse fragments other granular solids water and air it often possesses pronounced levees and may have a sinus ridge form on hill slope and the fans likewise mud flow as so is same as the debris flow but is composed of fine material as you can see a culvert has slipped down uh, in one of the regions in the hilly well other than this we have also complex landslides it is a category in which combination of two or more number of above type of movements are involved such as rock fall plus debris flow it may be rock slide plus rock avalanche it may be topple plus rock etc so these are the complex landslide now let us know what are the causes of the landslides it broadly it is the slope failure deforestation unscientific forming hydrostatic pressure earthquake shocks intense rainfall and cloud burst and the development and engineering activities now let's see one by one in case of slope failure it is generally the steeper the slope the greater is the likelihood of occurrence of a landslide landslide is a gravitational phenomena hence slope angle has a direct relation with the slope stability as the slope angle increases the gravitational force is increased thereby reduces the stability slope becomes a concern when they achieve a critical state of natural equilibrium it becomes more critical when rock mass overhang along the down slope deforestation due to deforestation soil of the area becomes loose and fine material is eroded thus poor spaces are developed which during the rains are filled with water that acts as lubricant to induce downhill movement of material debris etc barren slopes are more prone to erosion that causes landslides and land use changes such as conversion of vegetative slopes into build up area also induce landslides now another important cause is the intense rainfall and cloud burst very heavy downpour of rain suddenly at one place high rainfall coupled with drainage network causes weakening of the sediments and is also responsible for high erosion seepage weathering and leaching that all lead to triggering landslides it is apparent that surface morphology and subsurface sediments play a major role in surface runoff and heavy seepage joint planes and cracks in rocks and coarse grain sediments loose boulder beds and other such material all favors water percolation and that cause excessive water pressure within the sediments it is also known as hydrostatic pressure it ultimately increases shear stresses and decreases shear strength of the sediments the pore pressure also increases due to sudden rise in water table for one reason or the other as a result the mass falls down or creeps slowly depending upon the lithology volume of mass gradient etc to erosion it is another important cause it is mainly along the rivers 
where river water flows towards the bend of the river with high velocity in its outer edge. It causes rise in water level due to centrifugal force. As gravity pulls the water downward, water currents develop a rolling spiral velocity against the bank that erodes away the sediments. It creates an overhanging of the sediments which collapse due to the weight of the rock mass. Earthquake shocks is another important cause. Earthquake shocks reduces the shearing resistance along the fracture zones or joint planes which in turn induce landslides. In fact, loose and unconsolidated sediments on the steep slopes become vulnerable with the earthquake tremor and that indu induce landslides. Unscientific farming, particularly in the hilly region, the terrace cultivation of crops like paddy, cardamom, etc., that all needs standing water. And this water slowly seeps inside the ground and supersaturates the hillside, which may cause landslides. Now, most important is the developmental and engineering activities, the human interference. The landslide problem has further been aggravated due to the anthropogenic activities, that is, the human interference use of high powered explosive during construction of roads, dams or bridges etc. may cause shattering of the rocks and later during the rainy season water within the fracture zone may cause landslides. The human interference has contributed significantly causes instability of the slopes mainly in form of hill cutting for construction of individual houses and urban agglomeration. In fact, nowadays people are cutting the natural hill slopes in a table land for construction of buildings without considering the engineering aspect. The removal of lateral support by man's activity is another cause of slope failure. The overloading of the hill slope is also responsible for landslides. As you can see here, a retaining wall has been built to save the house, but such retaining walls when made unscientifically, they get toppled, resulting into unfortunate tragedies. Likewise, sewer water seepages from townships or villages, if this water is not channelized, it can induce instability of the hill slopes. Thus, human interference is also one of the major causes of the landslides. Now, we have just learned what is a landslide and what are the types and causes. As you can see, the various causes, but most important, the human interference, which causes landslides most. Thank you. Thank you.